All right, so I thought I'd do this uh, little video, short one. Yep, short one. So uh, somebody was asking me uh, why I pull the tape off, why the car, why I try to paint it. Uh, mainly what I was doing there was uh, anytime you got a blend edge or like this tape that I had to take this pen stripe off with. I don't like doing that, but sometimes when you do use car stuff, you find yourself doing stuff like this. If you waited till this was painted and dried and cleared and based, based and cleared, uh, you'd have to go back with a razor blade and cut that before you pull it off. As the clear is wet, you can pull it off. It lets that clear lay back down on the edge and uh, doesn't make a sharp line. So it lets the clear lay down basically. Uh, where you have a tape line. Now another thing for you, uh, I'm sure painters do this just like I do sometimes, you know, uh, the better you get at taping, the less you gotta worry about this, but sometimes when you over tape onto the panel or your tape and your clear uh, make a seam, you have to go back and cut all this with a razor blade. If you don't, you know, when you pull it off, it'll uh, pull your paint off in a sheet. So what I like to do is when the car is still wet, you just pop that off and it eliminates having to go back with a razor blade and uh, be so careful when you're pulling the tape off. Uh, you know, it's just one of those things that eliminate the problem of uh, having an edge peel back. So this is a little car we painted the hood on last week and they decided they wanted the fenders done. Uh, got a little clear blistering. So. So we got a little sealer thrown down on that and a little light gray sealer and uh, we sanded that with 320 and sealed it and uh, that's another thing Seth uh, on your car you might want to uh, knock your dead clear off with a 180 and then go over it with some 320 to smooth the surface before you uh, seal it. Uh, you can go directly over the 180 scratch but uh, it's not recommended. I do it, but uh, you know, you get a little bit of dieback. The finer you uh, prep the car, the better your uh, results will be as far as the shine and the durability of the paint. So, uh, so hopefully that answered all the tape questions and uh, why I pulled off like I did and uh, all that good stuff. So, uh, getting ready to put some silver in the gun. And uh, just letting this flash off a little bit. You can see where it's still wet here and it's flashed here. So we want it to get like a chalky satiny look. So we're letting that uh, dry off. So. so, yep, we're using the GTI for this one. Put some sealer down on there. Well, doing the hand cam thing. So where Tommy Shu got his uh, DA, that's cool. And uh, a lot of you guys will be getting stuff. Packed a lot of boxes yesterday, sent some stuff out. So that's cool. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I know a lot of you guys are into tattoos and stuff. I uh, watched some TV last night and it's sort of interesting how uh, you find yourself doing stuff and seeing stuff that, you know, seems to be important. And I don't know what, you know, I don't usually watch this particular show. I think it was LA Inc. And uh, I'm sure a lot of you guys watch it. And uh, I found myself glued to it. It was very interesting to me. Uh, they had three people come in that uh, survived the plane crash. They went into the Hudson River and uh, it was one of those shows that just made you feel good, you know, to be an American or to live here and uh, to be around people, you know, like those people. And uh, they talked about, you know, thinking they were gonna die and they explained the whole thing and it's probably better if you just go on YouTube and, uh, you know, take a look at it. I'm sure you can pull it up, LA Inc. It's an episode from last night, but, uh, Three people, totally different walks of life, you know, when you watch it, you'll say, wow, man, what do these three people possibly have in common? And uh, they talked about how quiet and peaceful that plane was after the motors went out. And uh, they talked about how they knew it was gonna crash. And uh, after the plane crashed, they talked about how everybody on the plane uh, 
was helping each other and uh, everybody on the plane put somebody in front of themselves. So basically when uh, you know the chips were down the people came through and uh, you know everybody was helping each other out and uh, they were making human ladders to get on from the plane to the ferry boats from the light boats onto the ferries and uh, it was just a pretty inspirational story. So, uh, Pretty cool stuff. Not really into the tattoo thing, but uh, for some reason found myself watching that, and uh, I thought it was a cool concept. Uh, I think of all of us guys on YouTube to just put somebody else in front of uh, you know what we want to do, and uh, you know just give somebody a hand. Uh, that's how we change stuff. So I just thought it was an interesting show and uh, found myself glued to the television and uh, maybe I'm just stupid. But it seemed like a good concept. And uh, you guys say everybody helped until the last person was, uh, you know, helped. And uh, I saw some uh, video footage from that Italian uh, liner going down and uh, wasn't so calm on that thing man they were uh, sort of panicking there but uh yeah I'm sure there's sharks in the Hudson too but I don't like sharks so that would make me nervous too salt water so let's put some paint in this gun got some uh, leftovers is what we're gonna use some PS2 and some PS2 this looks like it might have been tinted so well uh I hope we have enough here let me uh, set the camera down here. Oh yeah, it's like good stuff. Good stuff here. You, know, you guys are like pissed off looking at the side of that can like that, but uh. Let me just get this stirred up and we'll go spray this stuff. So I'm making another trip to the warehouse today for Andrea. That's two trips in one week. That doesn't usually happen. So, good things. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, we got more than enough paint here. It's a little on the thick side, but this color is awful for covering, so. Those silvers don't cover very well. So. So, yeah. Put a couple videos up yesterday. Let me, uh on the camera stand out here eight minutes so, uh, I haven't heard from my buddy over at Southwest Customs Max I know you had some surgery I hope you're doing good buddy I know Matty G's not doing good you know recovering guys with your motorcycles. I don't know, man. I know that it's uh, one of those deals, man. People with motorcycles constantly got to explain to people that uh, care about them how they're safe and uh, they're going to be okay. But uh, it just scares me, man. People I know riding bikes, uh, just people don't look out for motorcycles at all. So. And, uh, it happens so fast on a bike that uh, you really got to be on your game or uh, you can find yourself in trouble real quick. So enough preaching, let's start painting.
for the dark side. No lights on this side of the square room. said he was going to send me a 1.4 tip for my uh, Developers Plus and uh, yeah Rick Fix I don't know if you're going to like that 1.2 it's probably going to be way too hard to get it to shine like that but uh, if you want I'll send you the 1.3 that uh, I have on my Plus I don't know if you have a 1.3 or a 1.4 now so We'll just keep passing those tips around until we figure out what we want. But, uh, seems like my Developers Plus used to work fine, and uh, I don't know if somebody changed something on it or what. I bought a needle for it, I bought another fluid tip, and I think I bought an air cap so far. So I'm going to try the 1.4 and see if that solves the problem. But, uh, I don't know how that's going to work. I'm going to have to wait and see. Go Tom. Mexico, Mexico. 500 milliliters. Oh, we can read that. Huh? Mm-hmm. Take that home and have it over some ice. So yeah, I got the floor going in the boat today. Hopefully Hans will do that. And uh, Volkswagen stuff. Hopefully it'll be a big Volkswagen weekend. Yeah, I gotta reprime those sharks tonight when I get home. And uh, I don't know if I'm painting those or not. Uh, still working something out on that, I guess. I don't know. Uh, these, uh, I think there was a couple pinholes still in the black ones I did, and he wasn't real happy with that. So uh, We talked for about an hour on how to fix the pinhole problem. think we need a little more gel coat you know there's not enough uh, barrier there protecting the fiberglass once you uh, sand it it's raw wide open so I'm not sure that's that I know there's a boat show coming up for him so I'm sure it'll be condition critical all right let's throw another coat on there I'm not going to wait too long on this one. This is sort of a uh, roach. Not a very nice car. I mean, 
you get the re reproduction quarter panels and the uh, half panels and stuff, I always like to strip that e-coat because it seems like it's never really good quality. So um, most of the Kappa aftermarket parts are, uh, you know, the better quality aftermarket stuff has a five-year uh, salt deal on it, you know, where they uh, test the e-coat. But on some of those smaller companies, uh, the e-coat's probably not the best. So uh, you might want to sand that off. And uh, start fresh. And, uh, just a little suggestion. And that car's looking good, guys. Real good. So uh, I love the way it sits. It's got a real good stance. And, uh, can't wait to go for a ride in that. So, uh, 20 minute video. Pretty long. I think we're about done with the silver. I'll go ahead and dust the coat on here and uh, we're gonna hammer some clear over this and try to make this one long video. So, so let me get the gun, we'll dust the coat, we'll clean the gun out, and we'll go to the Sokola and uh, we're gonna put some clear down.
We got it taped off. I'm gonna throw some clear on it. I'm gonna pull that tape off. And uh, you guys don't beat me up too bad, you know? I don't make the rules. Uh, my stepdad used to always uh, have a saying, and uh, it was the guy with the gold makes the rules. And uh, we never really did understand or like that uh, saying, but uh, the older I get, the more true it is. So. He with the gold makes the rules. So, I'm just the worker bee. clear up we're gonna use the 30 clear again of course it's pretty much all I'll use is 30 uh, if I'm doing a you know a nice job or something I'll go with the 42 uh, the 42 is uh, more of a glamour clear I guess you know if you're doing uh, like a you know a muscle car or something you want really super deep you can do that I did have another question, and I'm going to go ahead and answer that right now. And the question was, why two coats? Uh, if you look on the can, it recommends two coats, and two coats will give you the OEM finish. And with that two coats, I believe that uh, you know there's plenty of material on there. If you're going to 1500 the car, it just depends on how you're applying the material to the car. Uh, in Florida, unless you're in a real good control, uh, controlled climate booth. Uh, where you can adjust the humidity and the temperature uh, we have so much water in the air humidity that uh, you can have a solvent pop problem uh, so you can eliminate that by adding the accelerator where it more throughs dry it will through dry better and won't uh, skim coat and not dry through so uh, that's one way to eliminate it but uh, pretty much anything more than two coats clear of your in your garage, you, know, you can have some solvent popping issues. The solvent pops are from the, the clear, the top of the clear skims over and the bottom's still wet. And uh, it can't release the gas once it skims, and that's where you get the pops from. So, you know, it's very important that the clear through dries. Probably put a little accelerator in this clear today. Just because I don't want any hanky panky over them stripes. I don't want to go back to back. There we go. We got the 30. See, my can come smash sometimes too. I try to keep the smash cans for myself. I should have gone to the three. Uh, this problem I always overmix. It's really wasteful. If you're a painter and uh, you want to try to save on materials, you can keep a log of what it takes and what you dump out. I used to uh, be in charge of mixing paint. At this one shop I was at, I would. Uh, I could go around and whatever the guy had to paint, I knew exactly what to mix. And, uh, we stopped letting the painters mix their own uh, paint. I think we saved about 30% in the paint shop on toners uh, just by reducing the amount that we made. But, uh, catalyzing what was in the catalog and what was in your cabinet too is another uh, big help. You can uh, 
do a quick, quick reference and see what you got in stock. So I don't think we have any accelerator here. Looks like no. The accelerator. So we're just going to be going with it. Got the 30 clear with the 6 hardener. said it's real pleasant out today I don't want to say it's in the low 70s right now and uh, we get up in the high 70s today here which is incredible to me after seeing the weather some of you guys are having so there we go and uh, look at my mask So, 31 minute video, wow, nobody's watching this one. All right, so to get to this point, we uh, 320 our fenders, we sealed them with a 2K sealer, we uh, taped our line off there, and now we're getting ready to clear it with two coats of 30 clear. Uh, we based it with the MSB, we used a 70 reducer, 870, and uh, took three coats to cover. seconds there and let that pop off she's looking really sexy hopefully nothing bad happens when we pull the tape off over the stripe and uh, this will be easy squeezy we'll go back and get on the bug been uh, getting some motor parts together to build a Volkswagen motor. I'm going to build a 2110. I'm going to do an online build for you Volkswagen guys. And, 
uh, it's going to be 82 by 90 and a half. And uh, I think we're going to go with the K8 cam, some big valve heads, some bird rockers. And uh, should be a pretty sweet little motor. Uh, we'll go with a set of 48 Webers on there, IDAs. And uh, maybe put that one up for sale. Stringy. So, uh, you know, when you're doing the clear test, always stick your finger in the paper there. If you're getting little strings off, you can still run it. When it stops stringing like that, you can usually go with your second coat, hammer it, and you won't have a problem. Uh, you don't ever want to hammer another coat when it's stringing like that because uh, it'll be uh, clinging for life if it's stringing. So. I'm doing this as quick as I can, guys, because I know this is a seriously long video. 37 minutes. That's not really bad there from start to finish, so. I'm gonna go ahead and push the envelope here. It's not sun blistered anymore, and uh, it'll get us on to the next one. So, there we go, man. Uh, sorry it was so long. Uh, if you like it, push the like button. If you hate it, push the not like button. And uh, if you like to type, leave a comment. So, uh, thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate it.